Hey everybody, what's up? I am uh, looking at uh, a couple of boxes for knives and I'm going to leave a little bit of suspense here before I reveal what the new knives are. However, um, yesterday I went to the knife store and I picked up not one new knife, but two new knives. Uh, I violated my special rule of knife buying, which is to, you know, not make impulse purchases and not buy more than one knife on the same day if it can be helped. Um, the last time I did that was last summer. I bought the CRKT Drifter stainless steel and the Kershaw Cryo, both of which knives I basically hate. Um, one of them broke and the other one I never carry. So uh, I think that buying more than one knife on the same day is kind of silly, um, but I did it. Anyways, um, I also was not planning on buying more knives for the foreseeable future. My birthday is in sort of towards the end of October. I was planning on getting something then, perhaps something for Christmas. I was contemplating sort of a high-end carry type thing. Uh, I was thinking about the Spyderco Military Titanium, the uh, ZT561 uh, Hinderer. Um, I still might do that anyways for Christmas perhaps, but um, anyways, I couldn't wait that long. <laughs> I wanted to get a new knife yesterday and I ended up with two new knives. Woohoo! Um, anyways, I came home after uh, buying the knives and kind of like chilled out and um, watched a little bit of stuff on YouTube and I came across this interesting video by a guy about the obsessiveness and the addictiveness of uh, knife collecting and I think that that's a subject that hits pretty close to home right now um, and basically what he talked about like this was a guy that had like thirty thousand dollars worth of like custom knives the knives he was showing and talking about they're all like named after guys and I have no idea who they are but clearly they're custom knife designers and you know that's cool um, but the guy's talking about $700 a knife what, or $1,000, all these like crazy amounts of money. I probably don't even have $1,000 invested in my knife collection at this point. Um, so anyways, that's totally like a different world really for me right now. But uh, he was talking about like people, you think that you're going to get the knife of your dreams, say it's a paramilitary too, um, you know, the ZT561, like whatever, choose a knife that's a grail knife for you and you're gonna get that knife and it's not gonna be enough. Some people are just collectors, they're greedy. Um, it's in some people's nature and it's in my nature, man. Like when I was a kid, I collected comic books and I had probably a thousand comic books by the time I was like in, in my early teens. And then I, you know, eventually moved away from that hobby. And now knives are my hobby, you know? Um, and that's okay, I think. I think it's in human nature to be greedy, to collect. Some people are more prone to that than others. But as long as you keep it in perspective, as long as it, you know, you have money for it, disposable income. And let's be clear what disposable income is. It's not money you're going into debt to take. It's not money you're taking from other necessary expenses. It's money that's sitting around for you to do as you wish with. Um, and I'm very fortunate that I have a little bit of that disposable income every month that I can play with and, and do stuff like this. Um, the guy in the video was talking about how some people are spending too much on knives, like they're obsessed with it, trolling the forums, you know, looking on YouTube for sale videos, trying to get good deals out there. Uh, thank God I don't have access to Amazon.com or, you know, God knows how much I would have spent by now. However, um, and he, he was saying that some people have like separate credit cards and they get things mailed to their offices to hide it from their spouses or whatever. Um, I tell my girlfriend everything that I buy for in the knife world. Um, sorry, just getting a drink. And, um, you know, bless her, she's very supportive, you know. Uh, it's probably one of those topics that is not of great interest to her. But, uh, you know, she's always willing to listen. She watches my videos. And, you know, if you're watching right now, um, you know, I, I love you very much. And, uh, you know, thank you for being supportive. Um, okay, without further ado, I will show you the knives that I got. The, obviously it's a Spyderco and a Cold Steel. I flipped over the box of the Cold Steel because there's no suspense on a Cold Steel box, man. They show you a picture of what's in the box. Uh, Spyderco, at least, uh, you know, leaves a little bit to be desired. You're not quite sure what it is unless you see the label. And I hope nobody can see it because then they'll know exactly what it is. But, um, anyways, it is the uh, Spyderco Persistence. Um, I love Spyderco. It's my favorite company, bar none. Uh, quickly becoming a huge Cold Steel fan though, mind you. Um, and anyways, my very first knife was a Spyderco Tenacious, purchased from the exact same store, 
probably, you know, I want to say 16 months ago. That might be a little off, but something like that. And uh, what a great knife to start your knife collecting journey with. Uh, if you've never bought a knife before and you happen to be watching this video, go ahead and get a Tenacious. You will not be sorry. So anyways, uh, I had a Tenacious. I took it to Mexico with me because it was a fairly affordable knife. If it got taken away, which I didn't know if it would, uh, I wasn't going to be heartbroken if I lost that. I could always b replace it. I also took the Bird Car Car too, and you know, uh, I've got other videos where I talk about that. But um, yeah, so the Tenacious I left there, and it's with my girlfriend, and she does carry it. So that gives me a lot of pleasure when I when I hear that or when I see that that she's using the knife. It's it's awesome. But long story short, I kind of miss that knife. Uh, so I went to the store, and um, I didn't intend to buy this, but. I looked at a Tenacious and I kind of thought, oh, you know, well, I'll probably have that in my possession again at some point in time, um, you know, or whatever. It's always going to be there. So I, I wanted to try something similar but different, and uh, this is what I picked up. I made a lanyard uh, the same night. So pretty sick knife, very high value. Everybody knows the value of this knife, so let's just leave it at that. I'll probably do a review at some point once I've carried it a bit more. Okay, cold steel. What do you think it is? Uh, I got the Recon 1 and I'm absolutely in love with that blade. Can't say enough good things about that. Except for the price where I am is slightly elevated. It's about $80 plus tax. You know, let's call it 90 for, you know, argument's sake. So that's a lot of money actually, but it was worth it. I don't regret buying that at all. I've been wanting to try another Cold Steel for a while now. And, okay, let me snap it out in front of the camera here if I can do it. It is the Cold Steel Voyager Large Clip Point. I'll flip over the box now and you can see what I'm talking about. There you go, in big big letters there. That would have uh, blown the surprise pretty fast. Also made a lanyard for this knife. Um, I don't know why I went crazy with the lanyards, but whatever. You know, good times. So, um, <clears throat> I've been thinking about the Cold Steel for a while now, especially after getting the Recon 1. Uh, I just think that they're pretty sweet, high quality, uh, great blades, you know, so I wanted to try something else from Cold Steel and uh, this is what I went with. I watched a bunch of different videos out there. The Voyager, I think, is sort of like, uh, can be compared to the Endura as far as Spyderco goes, and I'll probably do that at some point. It's just one of those knives that's been around for a lot of years, tried and true. I know they did a re redesign a few years ago and threw the liners in there and stuff, but it's got that triad log. So I think you get a lot of the benefits of the Recon 1, and it compares very nicely, another video probably coming soon, um, to the Recon 1, but this thing's 55 bucks where I am, so let's call it 60 with taxes. 60 versus 90, two-thirds of the cost, and what do you lack, really? You don't get the G10 handle, okay. Uh, you don't get the blade finish, which will eventually chip off and look crappy anyways, but you get all the strength, all the functionality, all the performance, you know, for 50, you know, two thirds of the cost. Uh, I took this knife out to the woods today and I thumped on it. Um, not batoning, mind you. I, I think that would be kind of idiotic to do with a new knife. I, I don't intend to destroy my knives. Uh, mind you, I think this knife could take it, but I don't. I just don't want to beat my knives up for no good reason. Uh, but I took it out there and I was sort of doing some carving, just uh, shaving wood off sticks and things like that. For literally like over an hour, probably 90 minutes, I was uh, I carved all these spikes, uh, you know, like a vampire killer or something like that, and uh, yeah, just fooling around. But it did really well. I was so impressed with the performance of the Aus 8, and uh, you know what? I brought it back, and it's still, you know, got a great edge on it. I'll show you with some uh, quick paper cutting here. Pretty sick, uh, you know, that Aus 8 really takes an amazingly sharp edge. I, I'm really falling in love with Aus 8 and Cold Steel. Uh, I used to have this attitude like, oh my God, you know, like Spyderco has VG10 and S30V and, you know, I still love those steels, I guess, um, to some extent, but I'm so impressed with the Aus 8. Like, it's a tough steel. Uh, it holds an edge for an adequate amount of time and it just takes such a razor sharp edge. It's really, really impressive. So, um... I'm very happy with these knives, you know, like I've gone, I bought a lot of knives over the years and uh, made some mistakes, you know, but these are just two great high value knives. Um, I'm still thinking about getting a high end carry at some point, but it's like, okay, say that I buy a Spyderco Military, it's going to be 300 bucks when taxes are in or, or the ZT, same thing, 300 bucks where I am. And it's like, this knife's 50, 60 bucks. You could buy five of these for one of those. 
and the performance will not be any better on those other knives. Uh, the toughness will not be any better. It's like, why do you need any other knife besides this one? I, I know this is kind of contradicting what I said earlier. You need, you don't need other knives. You just want them, um, and that's okay. Greed is good, in the words of Gordon Gecko from uh, Wall Street. Uh, you know, that's what capitalism is built on. That what that's a reward. If you work hard, you deserve to reward yourself uh, through irrational purchases. If those, if that's what is necessary to make you happy. After you work nine to five or whatever hours you work all week, all month, all year, whatever, you deserve rewards. Um, I'm not going to say go out there and like splurge and buy a bunch of crap that you don't need, but if there's something out there that you really want and you've researched it and you know you keep thinking about it, just do it, man. Like, don't let people tell you that you don't deserve it or whatever. Like, don't let people tell you. In the in in the words of our friend John Locke, uh, I'll leave you with this quote and then I'll call, call an end to this video. John Locke from Lost, uh, you know, awesome show by the way. Well, at least the first three seasons, it got kind of off track up after that. But um, yeah, John Locke, uh, you know, said, "Don't tell me what I can't do," you know, and those are words to live by. Don't tell me what I can't do. Thanks for watching.